The financial crisis clearly uh, pushed the economy into a substantial recession. Um, and the uh, monetary authorities in most countries reacted by cutting interest rates. That was an appropriate response. But they were constrained by the zero lower bounds, so that in the United States, uh, you could see interest rates were immediately dropped to zero to a quarter percent, uh, have stayed there for an extended period of time, and it didn't stop the, the Great Recession. Uh, under rational expectations, there are these credit friction shocks that hit the economy and that pushes us into a recession that stays there for a period of time until those shocks go away. The adaptive learning view is that agents don't thoroughly understand the economy, so they react to the pattern of data. And if there's a period in which there's pessimistic expectations, which pushes us to below average inflation and below average output, expectations then become uh, adapted to that, they become embedded, and then when those shocks go away, you still have an overhang of pessimistic expectations. Then the question is, if you have pessimistic expectations uh, about expected future output as far as households and firms are concerned, about lower inflation than uh, targeted by uh, monetary policy, uh, where are you going to go? Are you, are you going to be headed back to the original equilibrium or could you go off into uh, a bad territory? If the um, exogenous shocks, the credit shocks had gone away, under rational expectations we would be back at the intended equilibrium. But we're imagining a situation in which agents have uh, a pessimistic expectation overhang. And in that situation, we look at, given that interest rates are already at zero, would a uh, fiscal stimulus be effective? And we look at whether a, say, 20% increase for three years in government spending would be sufficient to push us back towards the targeted equilibrium that uh, monetary authorities are looking for. This is a theoretical model. There are a lot of possible outcomes. Uh, and uh, that it, it, it looks like it can speak to the U.S. experience and the European experience and the Japanese experience. It does look like the U.S. followed the right monetary policy in the sense that it aggressively cut interest rates immediately. Bank of England followed soon and thereafter. The European Union did not for quite some time. The fiscal stimulus in the United States, many people would argue, was uh, not large enough, uh, but it certainly pushed things in the right direction. We have looked at austerity, actually, uh, in another version of this model, and uh, it rarely works. So we find that uh, uh, fiscal stimulus of the right size at the right time is very effective in preventing the economy from uh, going into a stagnation steady state and returning the economy to the uh, targeted steady state. If the fiscal stimulus is too small, it may be effective in the sense that it raises output temporarily, but the economy can still sink back into the stagnation steady state. Monetary policy, if it's very aggressive early on, may also be sufficient, uh, but that depends on the size of the expectation shock. If the expectation shock is sufficiently uh, pessimistic, you need a strong, short fiscal stimulus uh, and as early as possible. The bottom line here is uh, expectations matter. Uh, they're not always fully rational. They adapt in a boundedly rational way to experience. If you have a bad shock, you should look at are you consistently failing to hit your inflation targets? Are you consistently uh, below uh, the normal uh, level of output and have high unemployment? If you do, then there's a possibility that you may go into a stagnation trap and, well, first you'd want to use aggressive monetary policy to low interest rates, but that may not be enough. If it's not enough, you'd better do fiscal policy early and, and a large enough uh, and in a temporary enough way.